Welcome back to the channel Nobby on Cars. This is the all new Mazda 3 and today we're going to have a look around it because let's face it, in Ireland there's not exactly too many places you can go to watch videos of car reviews. It's not like any of the TV stations want to do anything. So we've got YouTube and we're grateful. Thankfully we don't have the weather. It's a little bit drizzly here in September. This is the all new 3. It wants to eat a bit of the market share of the Ford Focus, Volkswagen Golf, the Astra, the Toyota Corolla, that kind of space. A family hatchback. But is it going to be useful for a family? We're going to find out because there's a couple of things wrong with this car, particularly when it comes to the rear passenger area. So hit subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. And let's check out the Mazda 3. Be honest, I think the back of the car is the best looking part of it. These lights, if you get them on the Sport model, are LED lights. They're not available on all the cars, but they look class. Even when the boot is open and there's only half of them there, they still look class. Interestingly enough, the parcel shelf, it kind of folds halfway through, so you can push it back. And I, I don't really understand the benefit of it, but anyway, there is no spare tire down here. There is a area for the Bose sound system if your car has that option. There's some tethering hooky bits things, little plastic clips that you can get and there is an LED bulb but apart from that there's no 12 volt, there's no hooky things. It's a bit strange. There's quite a big lip if you're trying to pull things in and out of the car. However when you bring out this parcel shelf and remove it. Nowhere really easily for it to go. I mean, it will fit into your boot. You can then pop your buttons and the seats will go down beautifully. And it's a nice flat space when that happens. You also have a locking function here, which means if you open the car with the keyless thing, right? So the car knows when you've walked away with this little yoke. But let's say they're in the house, or let's say they're in the car, even worse. If you close that, so you, you do that, you tell the car, I want you to lock as soon as I close the boot, I'm not going to do anything else. If you, those keys are inside, it's an Uber. Now you can get the all new Mazda 3 from just over 26,000 euro here in Ireland. This one is more like 31, because it's got quite a few extras in it. See that lock thing, it, it at least works. Now, it's got keyless, so I come around here, that also won't work. I'm not sure if that's because I've locked the boot or what the crack with it is. So let's get the old fashioned key out. It's now realizing what's going on. It just gets a little bit confused like that sometimes. Now jumping into the back, this is where the first big issue starts. First thing you'll do is hit your head off that if you're not careful because it has a sloping roof line which for me is okay, I'm not exactly six foot, but if you were, it's all kind of imposy-ish around here. And as much as it's still got nice materials in the back, it's all very black and dark. You get LED lights for your passengers, they're okay. There's a center armrest, they're okay. It's not getting to the worst issue though. And the eyes are fixed points there. You can easily get at them if you're trying to put in a car seat. Although, when you are trying to put in large car seats, this thing doesn't really help. There's not a huge amount of space. For example, I've had to put that passenger seat all the way forward to where it is to be able to have toddler access in the back and get one of those Isofix seats in and be able to swing it around. And then there's no USB. There's no air vents. There's a big hump on the floor and rear leg room is not great. So it'll be fine if you've got smaller kids, but if you've got kids that are 10 or 11 who are just about to hit a growth spurt, I'm not sure the legroom of this car is gonna get you through the next three or four years. Just let me demonstrate to you what I mean about the, the child seat thing. So that seat's there from my driving position. And you come along with one of these big bulky child seats. I'm trying to get in, you can click into place very easy, that's good. But your leg space is not great. And if you have them rear facing, which you're gonna do at that age, it's a struggle get it in each time. Thankfully it gets a lot better up front in the Mazda 3. So uh, let's take a little look at that and check out, for example, the three spoke steering wheel that greets you as soon as you open the, the door. Looks really, really great. 
Not much use for them today anyway, unfortunately. I love the way the console is angled towards the driver. You've got this center bit which feels sporty because to be honest with you, it, it does feel like a sports car in lots of respects. First of all, this like three spoke steering wheel would look class in the Mazda MX-5. And then the way things wrap around you, it just, it feels good. You get USB here, more under the armrest, but the armrest, you can't lift it up from here. You have to open it, push it back, and then lift it. Now it opens hugely. There's this little uh, divider bit that goes in there and you can keep separate compartments for storage. There's a 12 volt, another USB in here. So that bit is generous. It still doesn't make up the fact that there's nothing in the back though. Again, it's a family car. Family's gonna want to be able to charge stuff. There's more storage area here, two cup holders, and even back behind this again, then there's more stuff for mobile phones, keys and stuff. I love the stitching on the dashboard. It's all lettery and soft touch and it all feels good. The stuff you're touching regularly is gonna impress you. There's lots of bits of chrome, the Bose logos and the doors, all give it an element of class. And then your aircon has proper buttons, your heated seats, your heated steering wheel also on this model, not to mention the heads up display are also nice little things that just make this car a little bit special. These seats are really, really comfortable. When the heated option for them is on, it could be a little bit toastier. You know, I won't lie to you. It's not quite a cold December mornings, but when that happens, you're gonna wish they were a little bit warmer. Well, let's just put on another layer, like your dad would say. The infotainment system is pretty easy to use. I like the fact that first of all, there's a jog wheel here and there's even shortcut buttons. You want music, you press the note image. You want to get to sat nav, you press the little arrow that gives you an idea of your location. So you can't do sleepy stuff with it. Now, I don't know if you would when you're driving, to be honest with you, and most of the Mazda stuff is disabled, the touchscreen elements when you're driving, but none of it actually does. So everything comes from here. You get Apple CarPlay and Android, you can stream music and apps to your phone. So it all does all the normal stuff that you would expect. The instrument display is somewhat digital. Weird thing is, the petrol gauge needle is a lot higher than the middle bit there that suggests that there's less, it's confusing. How much petrol is in the car? There's the voice activated controls. Say a command. Navigation, please. Say a command. Address search. Say the full address. Tesco, Santry. Sorry, could you repeat that? Now you're not gonna know exactly the road that these places are on, particularly if it's a, something you're looking to buy or whatever, you might know that it's 15 to 18 Santry Park West or whatever it is. So that's kind of as far as the voice activated commands are gonna be able to take you. Sorry, I didn't understand your request. Say, help for additional assistance. It's okay. Have a nice day. As standard on the GT Sport version of the car, you'll get LED headlights, high beam control, radar guided cruise control. There's also cross traffic monitoring. I don't think I've seen it work as well in any car as this Mazda 3. If there's someone coming down the road towards you as you're reversing out of a driveway, for example, Alarms go nuts to tell you, hang on a sec, you're gonna hit a car. You have the wide screen, it's really wide, reversing camera as well, which would help with that, but it really, really works well. It also has blind spot as part of that package. In your display, you'll get traffic sign recognition, and there's also G Vectoring Control Plus, which is Mazda's way of just doing little adjustments to the car as you're driving. Even though the seats could do with being a little bit warmer, one thing I have noticed is you have to turn the climate control down to about 17 degrees to get any level of coolness out of it. Everything else is just too warm, like Goldilocks. This is a two litre petrol engine with just over 120 brake horsepower. It seems quite low output for such a high cubic capacity in a car. And like a lot of petrol Mazdas, they enjoy being wound up. The gearbox is super slick, really tight, really precise. And then couple that with the fact that it does like to be revved. It can make for an engaging drive, but if you're looking for mid-range punch that you might get with a diesel in terms of torque, that is one area that it's a bit lacking on the car. It feels refined. It's never particularly noisy inside the cabin. Uh, compared to the last model, there has been quite a reduction in things like 
inside noise. Lane departure, it will keep you from crossing over to the wrong side of the road, but it's quite harsh in how it reacts, so it nearly lets you away with it and then will give you a jolt to say, pull back in there, buddy. Overtaking is also made easier on motorways because of your blind spot that is in your passenger and normal driver's side mirrors. So the overall handling and driving dynamics of the car do make it a bit of a, a driver's car. It likes to be pushed on, it handles well, um, it just feels like it's geared towards the driver in so many aspects. And it's still going to be a good option for a family once you're not overly reliant on either a massive boot or plenty of legroom for rear passengers because they're two of the biggest parts of the car where it just possibly isn't as good as some of the other hatches in the market. But the interior is really going to make up for it because compared to the Ford Focus for example, it feels a lot more premium. The other bit of the safety features that have caught me off guard a few times this week are how effective the brake, the autonomous braking system is. If you even get too close to a car in stop-start traffic, as you have come to a stop yourself, but maybe you nudge forward for a second or whatever, the car really forcefully will apply that brake. And it caught me off guard, gives passengers a bit of a fright as well because they're jolted forward. It does work, but I think it's just a little bit overly sensitive. And then, you know, as you're coming to roundabouts, it really does sweep through them very, very easily. And that's one really good strong point in the three. And you can pick up pace with it. It just requires a bit more work with the gearbox. Fuel consumption around town, you're looking at sort of nine, nine and a half liters per 100 kilometers. You will get better runs on that on longer journeys, but a bigger two litre engine is going to use a bit more fuel uh, for the city centre type of driving that a petrol uh, 3 is probably going to be used most for. Really will keep revving. That's the proof. As you go over the speed limit on the dashboard as well, how much you're over goes red as the needle goes past that. It's another great way just reminding you that you need to take it easy. And the road sign recognition works very well. As soon as you go past any sort of a speed sign, it changes. And it will also give you information like if you're on a no overtaking solid white line or you can't overtake on one side of the road over the other, uh, you will have that information in your heads up display as well. So that's all really, really good. So it's a very smooth, driver oriented car. Possibly not as big as some of the other family hatches that you can get, but if you don't require tons of leg room for your rear passengers, then it's gonna be something a little bit different, less common on roads, a really, really plush, uh, nice interior, priced exactly as it should be, competing with all the main model uh, hatchback rivals, around the mid 20s, that's where all the good ones start. So from that point of view, it's a fair enough price, and I think for the 31, if you go as far as the optional extras which this car has, then things like the heads-up display and the leather upgrade, the Bose sound system, they're all upgrades that you can see and feel and touch all the time, so you're going to feel like you got the value out of them. But again, at that 31 grand, a lot of the competition wouldn't have some of those extras for that price. It's worth bearing in mind. Thanks very much for watching. As always, it's uh, much appreciated if you stick with me towards the end of these videos, and if you want to subscribe to the channel, you know by now, I'd be very grateful. Catch you very soon.